Hi everyone, thanks again for checking in into the Easy Powerwall channel. I also want to thank everyone for the great comments I received previous videos. Thank you very much, it's a real motivation to keep going on with this kind of content. In today's episode, I want to talk about three topics. First is the BMS holder. I'll show you how I designed it and how it's installed on the shelf. Second is the uh, switch, the main switch. I have one per battery bank. I install also the cable between the switch and the positive pole of the battery. As a bonus, I show you how I improved the design of the JK or G Kong BMS. Enjoy the movie. If you have questions, please use the comments. I will be happy to answer all your questions. One of the next steps is installing the BMS. There are several options. I first wanted to, to install the JK BMS like this <coughs> and connect it to a DIY bus bar, but then the cables are a bit too wide on this side. I will most probably install them like this, put them on a small support, and then I find a rail. I will install this on the wooden support. And if I have to do maintenance or replace it, you never know. You can disconnect the BMS leads, undo the power connections, and you can just slide it off the holder. Even these are available from uh, AliExpress. You'll find the link down below. The distance is not that critical, but I try to make four identical. This is aluminium, so it's going very easy. Before using them, make sure you remove the excess of metal with a small file. There are four battery packs. So I need to make four BMSs. I have to paint this one. This one's black, but that's for later. This is the support. This will be mounted like this. And I made one, I call it the template. So this is the template. I have uh, there were two test holes to see if I could mount them on the piece of wood. And the two bigger ones are to know where I have to drill. So I have a support on the shelf. So I can use the same holes for the piece of plywood and on the shelf. This part is the bottom. This will be on the shelf. I'll put this later on here on this side. I take 10 millimeter just to make sure I have a flat surface. The same on the other side. Even a bit more. So the screw fits more or less into the hole.
almost ready. The holder is attached, but we also want to keep the BMS firm into the holder. So in the next step, I will drill two holes and tap M3 into this uh, little piece of aluminium. I'll guide you through the process. Put the M3 tap into the holder. Make sure you have a 90 degree angle between the tap and the piece of aluminium. And then gently and slowly move your way through the aluminium. And you feel now you and then you slowly turn it back. Be careful, M3 is not that thick, you can easily break the, the tap. So be very gentle with the hardware. Number one is done. If there is any of excess aluminium Remove it gently with the file. Now I have these little screws of 3mm, M3 3mm. You'll find the link below in the description of this movie. And you see, very easy and perfect fit. So now it's it's ready. The only step we have to do is to drill the holes in the uh, in the shelf, and we can install the uh, BMS holder on the shelf. What do you think of the result? Oh boy, I think I made a little mistake here. Yep, I did. As you can see, we have a very short or small piece of metal. And I have the screw here, where I have much more room left. So I have to drill another hole here to make sure it makes contact with the BMS. Or I can buy a larger screw, but no, I will um, drill another hole here at the edge of the um, piece of aluminium. So learn from my mistakes. It's not a real big issue, but you can avoid this uh, little hole. You just need one here at the edge. To make sure it contacts here on this little square of the BMS. The holders are virtually ready. Time to work on some other projects of the power wall. Soon I will install them on the shelf. Hope you liked it. A link to the tabs, screws, all in the description. Next step, <clears throat> before we can install the BMS protection board, BMS, I have to install the cable because I want to attach it to the shelf and once the BMS is installed I have no longer access to this area. So let's 
<coughs> make sure the cables are connected. Once installed, I have to screw it to the shelf. So we have to connect this side as well. Put the switch on its final position. There's not too much room for error here. Maybe I should set a screw so I don't screw it up. <laughs> To keep the cable in place, <coughs> I use this little placeholder, you'll find the link in the description. So <coughs> then with the cable tie it's attached to this placeholder, so the cable can't attach the batteries. The little screw. attach it to the cable tie. Okay, <clears throat> now let's install our first BMS. It's time to put the BMS on its final location. So I have more or less determined the location where I install the BMS. I want this to attach to the shelf. To do this I drill two holes in the BMS support. And of course, these two holes have to correspond with the holes on the shelf. For this, I made this little um, duplicator tool. So here I drilled the two holes of six millimeter. And now I do the same here at the board, once I've determined the correct position. So I already drilled the two holes. Perfect fit. Oh, great. So if you want some extra, you can add some glue as well, but I think this will be fine. And it has the advantage if you want to remove it or so, you can always uh, remove it. I made a little mistake, a little bit too far, so I went through the shelf. So maybe it's good to add some tape on like 10 millimeter, so you know how deep you can drill. But it's not a major issue. Uh. Let's improve the very good BMS. I mentioned this before, the model has five holes at the wrong side for me, but on the opposite side, we don't have these five holes, which we can clearly see here. Hope it's visible with the sun. So I will just remove the back cover, drill a few holes and then attach it back uh, to the BMS. Don't be a smart guy, don't drill the holes because there are no components or hardware here, but if you drill, some particles might fall in the BMS and make a short. So remove the back if you have to apply this trick. But maybe your uh, BMS is positioned horizontally, then you don't need of course the uh, extra holes in the BMS. Like the previous model, proper soldering, everything seems to be fine. Mm -hmm. So I bought the 20S model. <coughs> I 
delivered the 20S leads. I thought because there were some leads missing that maybe I got the 24S model that they just removed the wires. But as you can see on the PCB, we are also missing some uh, components, some parts. So it's definitely a 20S version, hardware based. Always use a little sandpaper just to make sure. It's just a pity we have to avoid warranty. But my other, my previous BMS didn't fail after three years, so I hope they will last a long time. The last few days I received a lot of questions about the station, the setup and how it's designed. So in the next video I will not continue with the BMS or the BMS protection board. No, I will give a complete overview about the system, how it's designed, how it's made and I will make a complete circuit diagram. So you can see what we are working on or what you can expect in the next videos. So stay tuned, next episode will be very interesting.